Well, good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer. It's Wednesday, the 18th of October, 2023. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfin here in the sanctuary at Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. OurShepherd.net is the way to find us on the interweb. And as we walk through 60 essential Bible stories in the Old and New Testaments, we find that we've arrived at the story of the healing of the lame man that takes place in Acts chapters 3 and 4. And not healing by Jesus' own hands, because he has ascended by now, but by the name of Jesus. And of course, through his power, as Peter and John are able to heal this lame man. But not just for the sake of healing him, although they had compassion on him and chose to do that. But there's another much more important reason that they healed this lame man. So let's look at that. But first, let's begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen the very words by which we are baptized, by which we receive faith and life through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. All right, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of skip around because it's two chapters. We won't read the whole thing, but I'll read the story of the healing that begins in chapter 3, verse 1. Now, Peter and John were going up to the temple at that hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a man lame from birth was being carried whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate to ask alms of those going into the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So there it is. There's the miracle. There's the healing. And here's the real reason why. As Peter and John entered into the temple and this man clung to him, they clung to both of them, utterly astounded, all these people ran together into the portico called Solomon's, and when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. So the miracle has garnered a lot of attention. And what's the more important reason now that Peter and John performed that miracle by God's grace? To share the gospel. And didn't Jesus do that so many times too? He performed a miracle to show that he had authority. Authority to forgive sins. Authority to call himself the very son of God. Authority to say, look to me for salvation. Let me show you who I am. And so Peter and John do the same thing. Let me show you who Jesus is. I'll heal by the name of Jesus Christ. And now listen to what's truly important. And they walk through the story of Jesus, what had happened to him, how he was taken to the cross, how he rose from the dead. And then they say this. He says, and now brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers, but what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out. Isn't that incredible? That your sins may be blotted out. There's the forgiveness that they're preaching in the name of Jesus Christ. And all the prophets had spoken from Samuel and those who came after him also proclaimed these days, you are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So they preach the gospel to these people and it gathers the attention of the Sadducees who were, as the text says, greatly annoyed that the, the disciples of Jesus were preaching Jesus in the temple and they arrested them and put them into custody until the next day. So they, Peter and John were arrested and put in jail overnight. I'm sure that wasn't pleasant. But listen to this. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of men came to about 5,000. From that one miracle, which is, of course, glorious, 
from that one miracle, 5,000 men. And what's implied there is women and children who are with them as well, came to know Jesus, have faith in him as their Lord and Savior. So the next day, the rulers and elders and scribes gathered together with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and other priests as well of the high priestly family, and they put John and Peter in front of them and said, essentially, stop it. Stop talking about Jesus. And in response, Peter and John quote scripture. They quote Psalm 119, these words that you know very well, I'm sure. They said this, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. That's Psalm, I'm sorry, 118 verses 22 and 23. It's small print. <laughs> and then he said this, listen to these beautiful words. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So again, Peter and John seize the opportunity because of the attention they're receiving from the miracle to speak the name of Jesus Christ. And now get this, the, the, all the, the, the elders, the leaders, want them to stop, but they're afraid to do anything to them because the people are clamoring for them. They're, they've seen the miracle, they've heard about the miracle, they, they love Peter and John. And so the leaders are afraid of all the people. So they just simply say, look, we're going to let you go, but just stop talking about Jesus. And here's the key verse for this story. It's chapter 4, verse 19. Let me read 18 first. So they called them, John and Peter, and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. And this key verse, this next verse, is their response. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. So they didn't say, we won't talk about Jesus anymore, or you can't stop us from talking about Jesus. What they said was, look what happened. Look what happened in the name of Jesus. Look at all the faith, these 5,000 people who have faith in Christ now. And then judge for yourselves whether we should listen to you or listen to God. And I love that response because they're appealing to their their knowledge, their wisdom, their, their, uh, their, their knowledge of scripture, and then their own logic and reason and seeing what had happened in the name of Jesus and saying, really, do you think that we should listen to you rather than to God after what has happened here these last couple of days? I love that response because the answer truly is, of course, you shouldn't listen to us. They just want them to stop being so annoying. <laughs> But you know what? That's true for us today, too, increasingly in our society. Those of us who speak freely about Jesus as the giver of all good things, as the source of eternal life, as, as the source of all creation, we're being increasingly marginalized and even told that our words are offensive to those who don't believe. And there may come a time where we're called before the leaders and told not to teach or say anything in the name of Jesus. And at that time, we may need to take a stand. We may need to say what Peter and John did, whether it's right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. And I pray if that time does come that we seek in scripture and in prayer that same holy boldness that the disciples displayed in their time and that we also see God working powerfully through us as we stand up to those who seek to silence us. And instead, we see faith being made. We see lives being changed for eternity. We see the power of God. And I pray that's, I pray that's something that we all have an opportunity to see in our lifetime. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we, we desire to be able to speak freely about you at all times and all places. And we thank and praise you that we live in a society where where we are able to do that, Lord. But we see things changing, and Lord, we wonder if maybe there will be coming a time where we are told that we may not speak the name of Jesus Christ. And if that happens, Lord, we pray that you would give us holy boldness to stand up, to share the words of life and love and salvation that you've given us to share, uh, to do so, Lord, with strength, 
with the encouragement of your spirit, with the boldness that the disciples displayed as well. Heavenly Father, in this society, however it, however it changes, we pray that you would use us powerfully so that lives are changed for eternity in the name of Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace today and forever. Amen. And I pray he also gives you an opportunity to share the words of love and life and salvation of Jesus Christ today. Look for that opportunity. Pray for that opportunity. And then watch as God puts someone before you who needs to hear the words of life. Have a wonderful day.